Hello, welcome back to another video. We have a long list of projects and tasks that we have in mind for 2024, both big and small. We've narrowed it down and today we're sharing with you the nine major goals that we have for this year. These are the ones that we think are going to be the most impactful for living our dream life in the countryside in Spain. For the land, we have a couple of really big goals for this year. We're just going to set a couple of kind of chunky ones that we would really like to get on with this year. And one of those, we are just on the way now to actually start it. Since buying the land three years ago, one of the things we really wanted to do is plant an orchard. We've come to this tree nursery, which is not too far away from where we live. It's about a 20 minute drive. And we're hoping to pick up uh, a couple of trees today and then come back for some more. Um, we're not going to get citrus right now because they're better to plant in the spring, but we're gonna get some fruit trees and nut trees and start to get those into the ground whilst it's still um, kind of their dormant period before they start to kick out all the leaves. We'd like to try and add in as much variety as possible this year. So we're getting a mixture of different trees. We've just got a couple for now and then we'll go down and get some more over the coming weeks. But I'll show you what we've got today. So firstly, we've got a Nispro, which is um, a loquat. These are really nice. Some of our neighbors gave us uh, some of these fruits last year and we loved them. So we thought it'd be really nice to have our own tree. Uh, we've got a reasonably big one. Uh, we've also bought an almond. Um, we love almonds and eat the nuts all the time. So hopefully we'll get some really nice ones off this in the future. It's full of bloom at the moment. Um, but we need to find somewhere that this isn't going to lose its flowers every year in the wind. We also picked up um, a fig tree. We do have two fig trees. One is fruiting, one is only young, so hasn't fruited yet. But this one's a green fig, so just a different variety. We've also gone for the satin uh, peach. These are the, the flat peaches. They're really delicious and we love them. So again, we wanted to get some of the ones that we actually like and like to eat. And we've got some plums as well. There were quite a few different varieties of plums. We've gone for these purpley coloured ones. So quite a few different varieties, five trees to start with. And now we just need to think about where we're going to plant them. So as well as planting an orchard, obviously there are tons of other things that we would like to do on the land this year and Danny's going to take through a couple of them. So one of the bigger jobs I'd like to get done this year because we're here um, is get more of the trees pruned. So we've done a few that I've, I've shown you previously, um, but there's a lot, lot more to do. So I think I need to be less about the chipping and more about the pruning. I know I'd like to chip everything I can, but it takes up so much time and the pruning needs to be done um, over the winter period. So I need to basically get on with the pruning while I can, and then I'll chip everything at a later date or chop it up really small before the summer comes. So another thing we'd like to do this year is kind of be a bit more secure in the water situation. So we've pumped out a bit of water from the cistern already to the IBCs, but we'd like to take out more of that water so once we've taken that water out, we'll be able to clean the inside of it. It's got um, a lot of sludge in the bottom that just needs taking out. And then we'll have a nice clean cistern for the rain catchment that's just behind it. And then the other thing to do with the cisterna is to sort out this um, path leading up to it. One, it's 
quite treacherous to walk up, you, you fall over all the time. And then two, it also directs any runoff from a full cisterna directly towards the house, which is not ideal. So what we'd like to do is, is step this and also create a bit of a diversion off to the side so we're not channeling water towards the house. One of the things that I'd really, really like to spend lots of time doing this year is growing our own vegetables. We'll likely buy quite a lot of the things as plant starts this year, but there are some things that I'd like to grow from seed. We don't have a greenhouse or anything on the land yet, but what we do have is this space at the top of our house, which has not only a good space for drying clothes, but also it gets a little bit of sunshine every single day. So hopefully it will be a good place for us to get some plants started. The sun comes in through this window onto this wall here and moves across the room. So I thought that this would be a great place to set up a few garden tables and have some seeds started. As well as growing tons of fruit and veg, I also love having flowers around and like to have cut flowers in the house as well. Um, but here they seem to be incredibly expensive to buy a bouquet of flowers, so I'd like to just grow my own. It's also nice to have lots of flowers up near the veg garden so that you can get lots of pollinators and encourage all of that wildlife. So I'm starting a few seeds today for a few flowers that hopefully we're going to transplant on the land in a couple of weeks time once they've started to establish. Our other big plans in the house this year are for the kitchen. The idea is to knock through these two rooms into one big kitchen diner. We love to cook and eat together and we want a big kitchen diner where we can do that as a family. We've already got a style in mind and we've been doing a lot of research into how we'll actually build this, but this is going to be the biggest project that we do at the house this year. By building the cabin on the land over the last couple of years, we've given ourselves the confidence to try and give this a go as much ourselves as we can. When it comes to things like electrics, we'll probably need a helping hand, but we want to tackle the tiling, the plumbing, uh, plastering the walls, uh, putting together the cabinets as much as we possibly can ourselves. So if you're interested in watching us build what will hopefully be a beautiful kitchen diner, then consider subscribing to the channel or if you are already one of our subscribers, hit the notification bell that comes up and it will remind you every time that we put out a video. And talking of videos, I thought I'd give you an update on what to expect from our channel as well. Editing these videos takes a really, really long time and it's something that I'm really enjoying doing and I hope to find more time to be able to do it. But Juggling everything, especially with a new baby, is a bit difficult. So where I would love to be able to put out a video every week, I'm not sure if that's totally doable, but probably every two weeks is something that I'll aim for. We'd love to share a little bit about what we're doing in the house, what we're doing off of the land, some of the kind of weekly things that we get up to, maybe some cooking, um, all sorts of different things in a kind of vlog style, I guess, um, a little bit less clean cut editing and probably a little bit more day in the life. Editing YouTube videos can be a really good source of income, but only when you're getting thousands of views on each video and hundreds of thousands of subscribers to your account. So that's not something that I want to bank on as a, a sole income stream. And for some people, they may be able to do that, but it's probably not feasible for many. So one of the things I want to focus on this year personally is having multiple streams of income. So unfortunately, during my maternity leave, I was actually made redundant from a job that I was at for nearly two years, working for a tech company as the director of marketing. Marketing is my background, it's what I've done for a very long time. And to have your career kind of taken away from you at such a pivotal point in your kind of personal life is 
quite scary. It's almost a blessing in disguise one way because it means that I have more time to be able to spend with Isabel, which is amazing. I'll never get that time back. But it is something that we need to think about in terms of our income and where we're going to be getting money in each month. So what I'd like to do is actually think about diversifying the way that I bring in money so that I don't have to rely upon one source of income so that if it gets taken away, it's not such a stark difference or a big problem. Um, that might be looking at different ways to work the YouTube channel, um, whether that's Patreon or uh, other content um, and different ways of sharing that content. Maybe I could write ebooks, maybe I could um, share more content online or have a blog or something related to Smithdale Farm. Um, or it could be pursuing other passions. I've always wanted to write a children's story and that's something that I'm looking into slightly at the moment to see how you can publish your own books or um, find illustrators and, and things like that, which is a bit of a passion project, but could perhaps be something that in the future um, would feel amazing to put a book on Isabel's shelf that had been written by her mummy. So who knows? Um, this is kind of an unplanned plan, let's say, or more of a goal for this year to think about how we can better manage the streams of income that we have in order to set us up for the future. So before we start tearing everything apart, pulling this wall down, pulling up the floor, I think it's important that we have an area that we can actually do a bit of building work and construction in. Um, so we're going to make somewhere down in the garage where we can have a bit of a workspace. So this is a little job I want to get on with. This is um, a workbench I've inherited by moving to this house. But as you can see, the top of this is looking a bit scabby and a bit sorry for itself. Um, but the top of this just looks like chipboard. But the underneath looks like solid planks, which is nice. And it doesn't seem to be riddled with any kind of woodworm and feels fairly solid. So I'm quite happy about that. But the posts are concreted into the wall and into the floor. So these posts look like they've seen better days and might replace them in the future. Um, but like I said at the moment, everything's really solid. So I don't want to break it because at the moment it doesn't need fixing. So yeah, I think all I'm going to do is replace that top. But before doing that, I want to see if the, the table's level, because if it's not level, it, it needs a bit more sorting and I might have to uh, readjust um, how I put the boards on top to make sure it is a bit more a bit more level. So let's try that with the, the Lasgu that we've got sent recently and see how, how they've built it previously. That, to me, is looking pretty damn good. So over here, it's not in bad condition. It's just in the center bit, which I guess is, and this is nat naturally where I gravitate to, so I imagine the guy before did as well. A few holes knocking in, but I'm hoping it's gonna come up easy enough. And then he's mortared in at the back, so that'll come out as well. And then, yeah, so I'll chip that up, see how it goes. And then I'll have to cut this to size. I don't know about you guys, but that looks a lot better than I expected. The problem I always have, uh, being right-handed, is that most of my cuts 
like the, the main part of the flat bit is on, on the outside. Um, I don't know if I'm doing something majorly wrong. Um, if, you, if I am, let me know. So the best way I can think of of, of taking this small amount off here, just to make it flush with that. I was thinking to use the router, but actually the line I drew with the pencil was so like jaggedy because the boards underneath aren't straight. That, um, I didn't want the edge of the board to look like that. So in the end, what I've done is I've measured this um, to, the, to the line I want, um, and I'm just gonna run it down. But again, it means I can't clamp it, I can't rest it in anywhere easy. Um, so someone who knows, please let me know the better way of doing it. But for today, let's see how this goes. Put the battery in first. Does it fit? So me being me, I don't have the screws that I need to, to finish this job. They're all the screws up in the cabin from when we were doing the cabin work. So that's enough for today. And then when I go up, I'll just have to remember to pick up the screws and, and finish it off.